Good morning. Even though you've been here some time, welcome to Bosnia. Swedish group, Hungary, and Netherlands. You know the links and relationships between um, Bosnia and Sweden and Balkan and Northern Europe is much stronger than what you think. 12,000 years ago, there was an ice age, which ended. The ice melted, 3,000 meters of ice in Netherlands and Sweden and Norway melted. So now people could see the soil. But in Southern Europe, in what's today Spain and Portugal, southern Italy, Croatia, Bosnia, Serbia, Greece, Turkey, there was no ice. People were living here. So as the ice was it disappearing, people started moving to the north. 55% of the Swedish population today came from the Balkan region. This is what you have in your haplogroup. <laughs> so your origin is from Balkan. Netherlands less, about 10 to 15 percent. So we have long, long connection. Maybe that's why we hear so much, <laughs> because we feel like home. <laughs> yes, you are coming back home. Yes, we Good. are back home. <laughs> but of course, human history is much longer than that. The official historians and archaeologists want us to believe that advanced societies are just six or seven thousand years old, that everything started in Sumeria at that time. In reality, they try to talk only about the last cycle of humanity which started 12,000 years ago. And interestingly enough, after huge global catastrophes 12,000 years ago, the first cultural oasis was in Balkan also. It was called Lepenski Vir. It was on the Danube River. On Serbian side, a cross was today's Romania. The first cultural oasis. After that, the first civilization emerged. It was called Vincha civilization. Vincha was the capital of the area and uh, this capital was located in the place of today's Belgrade where river Sava and Danube meets. At that time, 11, 10, 9, 8,000 years back, the only ways, the trade routes, were along the rivers, which is rather logical. And Danube is the second longest European river and the most important for the Middle Europe. For 2,000 years, the Vincha civilization tried. They were first one to have metallurgy. They were melted copper, but not for the weaponry, just for the tools and agriculture. Their towns were as north as today's Czech Republic, most of the Hungary, today's Serbia, south Macedonia and northern Greece, to the east Bulgaria, to the west Croatia and Bosnia. It was huge area and not a single town had a fortress. Why? Because they had no enemies. They were the only one in Europe with the knowledge and skills how to melt the metal. Approximately 6,000 years back this knowledge came to Anatolia, today's Turkey. The armies were established. This knowledge came to the Northern Europe and the Western Europe and people started conquering, killing and taking what really do not belong to them. And we still live in that era. People, thanks to their military power, 
conquer other countries. But this was not our today's topic. Our today's topic are the pyramids. We have been programmed to think that pyramids were built in Egypt and Mexico. And that's wrong. The pyramids were built on all six continents. Secondly, they taught us that the Egyptian pyramids were tombs for the pharaohs. And that's wrong as well. In Egypt, according to Wikipedia, there are 118 pyramids. And that's wrong also, yeah. because Wikipedia is a non-scientific website. In Egypt, there are 155 pyramids, because I have investigated all of them, and I got them in my books. And not a single one has a mummy. No mummies in the pyramids. The pharaohs have been buried in the Valley of Kings, near Luxor, Thebes, and Memphis. These were capitals during Egyptian pharaonic era. So in 21st century, we need to answer the question using scientific means. Who built the pyramids? When? How? And why? According to historians, the first pyramids in Egypt were built almost 5,000 years back. They are saying the Step Pyramid in Saqqara, about 4,600 years ago. However, we don't have a proof for that. In that Step Pyramid, the tombs were never discovered of the Pharaoh Joseph of the Third Dynasty. And then they are saying the Pharaoh Sneferu built not one, but three pyramids. The Red Pyramid, the Bent Pyramid in Dakshur, and the Steph Pyramid. However, no proof for that either. And then they are saying the Pharaohs of the Fourth Dynasty, Pharaoh Cheops, or Khufu, Kefren, or Kafre, Myceren, or Mykerinos, they built the most magnificent pyramids on the planet. In those pyramids, no tombs, no bodies, no hieroglyphic writings, no symbols, no organic materials, not a single proof who built them. 28 superior stone pyramids from the limestone and the granite were built in Egypt, but much before pharaonic Egypt. The most important artifacts from Egypt is not in Egypt. For me, it is the one which is located in Egyptian Museum in Turin, Italy. Turin, Torino. It's called Turin King List. It's papyrus, one meter, uh, two meters seventy long, forty-five centimeters wide. Eleven columns showing all the rulers of the pharaonic Egypt. Three phases. The last phase is the phase of sons of gods. Egyptian rulers, or pharaohs as we call them, and, you know, pharaoh is uh, the Greek word, which came much later. Egyptian rulers did not call themselves pharaohs or kings, but sons of gods wanted to emphasize their connection to the gods. And this is the third phase which lasted from 5,000 years back until the last uh, pharaonic dynasties. The phase before that is called demigods or semi-gods. Each ruler would rule Egypt 200 or 300 years each 300 years and the first phase was the phase of gods the gods would rule egypt 1000 years each 1000 and it is said 
at the first gods with small g descended from the kingdom of heaven to the kingdom of earth so they came from the above ruling 1000 years each you know if you were ordinary man with a lifespan of 30 years or 40 years you would be looking the same ruler all your life and then your son or your daughter would also be ruled by the same ruler and your grandson and your grand 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 grandson so for them that one ruler was a god because he never died it seems rather logical that if there were a being ruling for 1000 years that they had the knowledge technology transportation means and engineering skills to build those magnificent pyramids at the Giza plateau when the first gods came to this planet 42,500 years ago even more important artifact is more to the east in Sumeria it is called the Sumerian king list it is literally a stone a stella with the carved names of their rulers and they have not three but four phases the last three phases basically match Egyptian ones the last phase is the children of God in Egypt sons gods and then we have lesser gods and then we have gods the first gods came 273,000 years ago again from the kingdom of heaven and the first rulers like Alajar they would rule Sumeria for 28,800 years the second one 36,000 years so 10 rulers in average 30,000 years our history is much more complex and exciting than what archaeologists and historians try to present us for them at that time there are only primitive cavemen yes. indeed primitive cavemen did exist but it was like today you go to Sweden or Netherlands or Bosnia we have those mobile phones we have TVs we have computers you go to Amazon forest Papua New Guinea you find people living in Neolithic times now the world of pyramids consists of pyramids in Australia Gimpy pyramid Asia 250 Chinese pyramids in the central province of Shanxi 20 biggest one are built over 12,500 years ago Indonesia Gunung Padang in the western part of Java which is 28,500 years old according to our friend discoverer Dr. Danny Hillman beautiful Koch Ker pyramid in Cambodia assigned to the 10th century by archaeologists no way they had such a advanced knowledge to build such a beautiful structure in the middle of the Indian Ocean seven pyramids on the island of the Mauritius 224 Nubian pyramids in the northern Sudan I mentioned Egyptian pyramids 104 pyramids on Canary Islands most of them on Tenerife which is the biggest island we have in South America more than 300 pyramids in Peru Acapena pyramid complex in Bolivia in Central America the Mayan civilization built over 100,000 pyramids in what we call today countries of Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador and Belize 97% of them 
are still covered by soil, vegetation, forest, jungle. You can see. What do we know about the civilization based only on 3% of their uncovered structures? Almost nothing. Encyclopedia Britannica claims that the Mayans were Neolithic <coughs> culture. Neolithic, Stone Age, primitive. <laughs> Not really. United States of America, they don't teach us that they have pyramids. Today there are 120 remaining pyramids in the Cahokia National Park. They call them Cahokia Mounds. What is mound? When you use dirt, soil, and you build something. They are not mounds. The biggest pyramid, called Monk's Mound, has a surface 12% bigger than the Great Pyramid of Egypt. However, they are covered by soil, by grass. American government does not allow archaeologists to dig over there. Why? Because those pyramids were not built, of course, by white Europeans or by red Indians. Indians were moving with the bisons. They were nomads. They were not building permanent structures. Europe, three pyramids in Spain. Palencia pyramid. Unfortunately one has been destroyed. In Italy many pyramids, most of them island of Sicily, 43 of them, Sardinia 1. Ancient Greek territory 16, the biggest one Hellenic. So as we can see the world of the past was the world of pyramids. Interestingly enough most of them are still covered by greenery. In April of 2005, I first came to this Bosnian town of Visoko to visit the local museum. But what really caught my attention was this. Everybody called this a natural hill. Why? Because it is covered by bushes and forests pine tree which were planted back in 1960s and 1970s. However, I was looking at the shape and geometry. We have four sides here. We have triangular faces. We have four corners, three we, we can see here. We have the same slope from bottom to the top. Geometrically speaking, this is a pyramid. At that time I took a compass which showed me that this side is perfectly oriented to the north. The one in the back, south, east, west. And this is how the pyramids were built. In China, in Egypt, Peru, United States. Perfect orientation. So far we thought that the best orientation was from the Great Pyramid of Egypt. To the cosmic north they have, actually that pyramid has an error of 0 degrees and 3 minutes. Which is almost perfect, 0 degrees, 3 minutes. The Kafre, 0 degrees, 3 minutes. Mikarinos, 0 degrees, 18 minutes. The bent Pyramid in Dakshur, 0 degrees 12 minutes. Red pyramid, 0 degrees 5 minutes. The Bosnian pyramid of the sun, according to the State Institute of Geodesy, has an error of 0 degrees, 0 minutes, and 12 seconds. The most precise ever. Now, some of you might have uh, experience in construction business. Now imagine, if you are building a house, let's say 10 meters walls, and you have to orient those 10 meters perfectly to the north, you bring geodesists, and you know, he tells you, okay, this is the orientation, but you start building, there are always imperfections on 10 meters, or 5 meters, or 2 meters. You can never be so precise to have zero degrees and few minutes. 
and here just here is 440 meters and precision is 0, 0, 12. So back in 2005 I immediately knew based on those two elements geometry and orientation that we have an artificial structure which has been covered by soil and vegetation after thousands of years the same scenario like in China, Mexico or Guatemala you see Egypt is south the climate is different no rain, sunny Peru, the same thing but China, Mexico or Bosnia we have a rain we have four seasons we have a lot of greenery so it's rather logical that those structures got covered by soil and vegetation that year I asked permission from the Ministry of Culture to do some preliminary research myself as a physical person I got permission for one year everything we did geological core drilling archaeological trenches lab analysis they were telling me anomalies they cannot be explained by the natural forces but by intelligent hands I wrote a book and I had a big press conference in Sarajevo October of 2005 all media was there Associated Press, Reuters, France Press all regional media and the word got out that first pyramids in Europe have been discovered at that time, I could see, I could observe two pyramids, which I named the Bosnian Pyramids of the Sun and the Moon. But I wrote, that most probably, there were more structures and that it had to be underground tunnels. That I based on my experience with Egyptian pyramids, they all have underground tunnels. Under the Giza Plateau, four levels of underground tunnels but not accessible for tourists. Why? Because they are much older than 4,500 years. They are much older than the end of the last ice age. That's the reason why they don't let tourists <coughs> in. Tunnels under Mayan pyramids, Palenque, other places, under all Chinese pyramids. That's why I wrote, we're going to discover underground tunnels. And look at today, 17 years later, we've discovered six entrances to different tunnels so immediately after the press conference I received 12,500 emails of support from all over the world people were very excited but from the cultural establishment of Bosnia archaeologists, geologists, historians, museums they were all against they were saying it's impossible to have pyramids in Bosnia. So they were publicly attacking me. The newspapers, TVs and so on. I went to the Department of Archaeology at the University of Sarajevo. Offered them collaboration. They told me, we know every square meter of Bosnia. We have no pyramids. We don't know 99% of Bosnian territory. I went to the museum. National Museum. They told me, we never had pharaohs, therefore we cannot have pyramids. <laughs> and I realized that I talked to the people who still live in the 19th century with a big ego. So I established non-profit foundation under the name the Archaeological Park Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun Foundation. And in the last 17 years, this has become the most active archaeological site in the world. Every year hundreds of volunteers from all six continents so far 3,800 of them from 63 countries came here. As a matter of fact they work today at the Ramne three tunnels. They're becoming dozens of experts from different fields and of course our employees. This is what we have discovered and proved. In Visoko we have at least six pyramids which are named the Pyramids of the Sun. On the poster number two it's number one, Pyramid of the Sun. 
to the left, upper left corner, pyramid of the moon, number three, love, number four, temple of Mother Earth, number five, dragon, number six, the sixth pyramid. We have the tumulus complex consisting of at least two tumulus, tumuli. What is tumulus? Tumulus is a conical artificial hill. The most, the best known in the world is the Silbury Hill in southern England, 60 meters high. The one in Vratnica is 62 meters high, the largest. And below the Valley of Pyramids, we have a network of prehistorical tunnels, chambers, intersections, underground lakes, longer than 100 kilometers on several different levels. So far, we've discovered two levels. We call them Ravne and Ravne 2. In the meantime, we discovered Ravne 3 tunnel, that hill, <coughs> when we purchased that hill. Ravne and Ravne 3 are at the same height, 476 meters above the sea level. Ravne 4, 476. Ravne 2, 471. Ravne 5, in this hill, 476. So it seems that this 476 tunnel network at one time was only one network. Today we call them different names because they are different sides of the valley. This valley, which is today transformed into a beautiful park, Park Ravne 2, at one point there was no valley. As you can see, the direction is north-south. What happened there? During the end of the last ice age, huge quantities of water melted. Huge tsunamis were coming from north, from Netherlands and Sweden to us. <laughs> Sorry. And <laughs> 1,000 meters of water. Can you imagine how big is the power? It was destroying everything on its way. So it destroyed part of those tunnel networks. That's why we have some tunnels on this side, some of that side. So, archaeologically speaking, this is very exciting. Now, when we started digging on the Sun Pyramid, one meter below the soil, we started discovering construction. On poster number three, you see the volunteers there? In upper part, you can see soil and the grass. When you remove one meter of soil, you discover the structure, the construction. And the poster number four, under those two handsome guys, <laughs> we can see we can see concrete blocks, concrete. We've analyzed at seven institutes for materials. They told us it was artificially made concrete. When we talk about the concrete, we can compare different samples, and we can talk about different qualities. Quality is based on two elements. The first one is hardness. Harder the concrete, the better the quality, because it is more durable. Our concretes are from 10 to 60 megapascals. 60, best quality, Germany, United States. Concrete at the Bosnian period of the sun, 155 megapascals. The second element is water absorption. Less water, better quality because if the water can get inside the concrete during the winter time, it freezes. And when you have ice, it has tendency to expand and concrete breaks. Our norms up to 3% water absorption. This concrete only 1%, superior. The size from this line to the top, 220 meters. The Great Pyramid of Egypt, 146.6. However, this pyramid actually extends more all the way to the bottom of the valley, so the real size is about 360 meters, which makes the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun the largest, the biggest on the planet. The age between layers of concrete, we've discovered fossilized leaves. Leaves 
coming from the trees. How did they get there? Well, somebody was pouring the concrete. The first layer, second layer, the third layer. The wind was blowing those leaves and they placed the last layer of concrete. But those leaves, they are organic material. You can date it through the radiocarbon dating process, which we did, and the age is 29,200 years plus minus 400 years. That's radiocarbon date. Calibrated date, or the calendar age, is about 14% more. So the true age of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, 33,600 years. Which makes it, officially, the oldest pyramid on the planet. So now, look at this. The first pyramids in Europe, the biggest on the planet, the best quality concrete on the planet, the most precise orientation to the north on the planet, and now the oldest on the planet. Everything we touch changes, accepted, human history forever. So what are we going to do now? Are we going to change the history books in little Bosnia and Croatia and Germany and England and Netherlands and the United States? Or we will try to stop this project, to stop this foundation and to stop that little man. So for the last 17 years, official sources are saying there is a guy in Bosnia who claimed that there are all these pyramids and we know that these are natural hills, who claims that there are existing tunnels, but he's digging them himself. <laughs> this is what they use. And through their media, National Geographic, and Wikipedia, and so on, basically, this is what they instill in all academia. Despite everything, the truth has to prevail, not only in archaeology, but only in history. In all other aspects, medicine, for example, the truth. We have been ruled for the last 8,000 years by a very powerful, small group, which we call elite. These are people who are not actually so much in bureaucracy. Pol politicians serve them. These people actually, today, print the money. If you think that the uh, Fed prints the money and that the Fed is the government agency of US government, you are wrong. Fed is private agency established in 1913 by the biggest bankers. Which bankers? Lehman, Morgan, of course, Rothschild Paris, Rothschild London, and Rockefeller. The same people rule European Central Bank. How is that possible? You think that European Central Bank is established by 27 national banks? Yes and no. Every national bank has majority of the capital by the private bankers. In France, again, Rothschild Paris. In Germany, Rothschild Frankfurt. In Spain, Rothschild Barcelona. In England, before Brexit, Rothschild London, and so on. These are the people who actually try to rule, control, and manipulate our lives. And it's been like that for 8,000 years. Is it in their interest to tell us that we have had more advanced civilizations in the last 100,000 years? No, it is not. Because people would start asking questions. Well, how did they live? Live 20,000 or 50,000 years back? Did Atlantis really exist? or Lemuria, or Madeleine Mu, or Og, or Peruvian civilization, or what was in Gobi before it became desert, and so on. And then once you realize that people then lived in the harmony with the nature, in a harmony with the physical and spiritual aspect of their living, lived without the fear then you realize that those ancient civilizations are actually threat to our elites. Why they are threat? 
because everything we do today is based on fear. Look at academia. If you are an assistant to a professor, if you try to say something wrong, they're going to fire you. The same thing in media world, in corporate world, in you know, the world of the politics. If they fire you, you lose the job. Without the job, no money. Without the money, savings account. Without savings account and no money, you cannot pay the mortgage. You cannot pay the mortgage, you lose the house. You lose the house, you lose the car. You lose the furniture. You lose everything you had. You lose your wife. Which does not have to be bad things sometimes. <laughs> or the opposite. Or the opposite. So, our life, unfortunately, is based on fear. In order to keep us in fear, they want to have this narrative that our life is only material life, which is based on five physical senses. Five physical senses really give us description of what's happening around us, but in a very small range. I'll come to that. Back to Bosnian pyramids. So, we have proven we have pyramid complex. What's the next question? What was the purpose of this pyramid complex? Archaeologists, Egyptologists, geologists cannot help us. Nobody really teaches them about the true purpose of pyramids. They teach them bedtime stories, pharaohs, kings, princesses, this and... Let's forget that. We need science. The true scientists are people with the scientific instruments. For example, physicists or engineers, they come with instruments, they measure. They got certain values. If you have another team, they come with their instrument, they measure. If they got the same results, they have proven the first one. If you have five teams, this is what is called international scientific validation of the results. This is the science. The science is not if you find a piece of ceramic, you show it to one guy who is expert in ceramic, oh, it's about 2,000, 2,500 years old piece from Phoenicia. The other one said, no, no, I think it's from Egypt, 3,000. Yeah. This is not science. It's called archaeology. So, we've been bringing classical scientists. Classical scientists are archaeology, geology, paleontology, biology, and then high-tech georadar, geophysicist, geothermal analysis. We've been bringing people who are doing energy measurements, physicists, electrical engineers, sound engineers, telecommunication engineers. We've been doing dating analysis, radiocarbon and uranium thorium. We've done 28 of them so far. And medical doctors to do medical studies. This is the world of the physical science. But we also bring the spiritual scientists people who can feel, because they can tell us what's happening behind the veil. So, this is what we have concluded. This pyramid complex was used as the energy amplifier. The ancient builders knew that the shape of pyramid, and for our planet it is four-sided pyramid. For Mars it's five-sided, as some of you might know or might not, doesn't matter. Four-sided pyramid. If you locate it above existing energy, potent place, it amplifies this energy. How do we know that? Because we have measured. Below the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun is a huge iron plate. Iron. Ferro. Iron generates electromagnetic field. The pyramid pulls this field, amplifying it. At the base and at the top, the measure results at the top, it's 50 times stronger. Interestingly enough, a red pyramid in Egypt, in Dakshu, we've done measurements with some uh, Russian scientists, Professor Kavroshkov, Tsiplakov, and so on. We could not go to Giza, because at the Giza you have the soldiers, they don't let you climb the top. Red pyramid, you can pay them some money because no tourists there, 
you can climb the top, you can measure it at the base. Also at the top, 50 times stronger, you know, electromagnetic signal. So the pyramid amplifies electromagnetism. Secondly, below the Bosnian pyramid of the sun, underground water flow. Water moves, releases negative ions. Negative ions are very beneficial to us. I'll talk about it. The pyramid amplifies the concentration of negative ions, which we can measure in the tunnels. Number three, there is a second underground water flow. Between two, the two, there is a charge. When you have a charge, you have electricity. The pyramid pulls this electricity. It's going through seven levels of passageways. They are like a spiral, and they go through the top. And we measure it when it leaves the top. It is an energy beam, which starts at four and a half meter diameter. It expands to 20 meters, reducing to four and a half, 20, four and a half, 20. So it has elliptic beam. It is electrical in nature. It is 28 kilohertz frequency. It is continuous because we measure it during the spring and summer and fall and winter. In science, <laughs> such energy beam is called scalar waves. The brilliant mind of Nikola Tesla, 123 years ago, was investigating those soft, subtle energies. In the last 50 years, the Russian physicist have been working with those scalar waves. Their conclusion, they move information within scalar waves or within scalar fields much quicker than the speed of light. Now, another thing they teach us in schools is that uh, Einstein's hypothesis that the biggest speed in the universe is the speed of light, speed of light which is a little bit less than 300,000 kilometers per second. This is a huge speed, 300,000 kilometers. Our planet circumference is 40,000 kilometers. 300,000, so in one second, speed of light makes seven and a half circles in one second around our planet. It's a huge speed. But if you send the speed of light to our sun, it takes eight minutes. If you send it to the northern star, the shining star on our sky, 700 years, you send it to the center of our galaxy, about 30,000 years, and you send it to the center of the universe, where one old guy is sitting in the white robe with the long white bird, being very busy creating our universe, planets and galaxies and star systems and different forms of life. It takes five billion years. So imagine little Bosnian sitting here in the Bosnian period of the sun decides to send a message to the creator using you know energy beam which is let's say speed of light. It would take five billion years till it reaches the God. God responses another five billion years. It's 10 billion years for the communication in the new universe. In 10 billion years, this poor Bosnian would have his bird <laughs> growing very, very, very long. So it's not very practical. We need something quicker. And really, the scalar waves move information from one point in the galaxy to another one instantly. So there are different ways of transporting the information or the energy. So our conclusion, looking at the poster number two, object number one, and energy beam going through the top. Our conclusion, the first potential purpose pyramid energy would be to be the communication device. The second one. Most of you have already visited the tunnels. 
several times. You go to the tunnels, you can breathe very well. As a matter of fact, deeper you go, you breathe better and better. And I usually say, it's not very logical, but nothing in Bosnia is logical. <laughs> People with the respiratory problems, asthma, for example, they breathe so well that after a few times, they don't need inhalator, air pump, at least for the weeks. People with a high blood pressure, it gets normalized. People with, high, with a high sugar in the blood, it drops five, six, seven points. People with some other health challenges, especially very serious ones, we can see that after 10 days or 15 days, they have revolutionary progress in their health. Even though our foundation does not deal in healing, we don't give medical guarantees, we see the potential, potential second purpose of the pyramid energy is to protect what is the most precious to us, and that would be our health. How is that possible? Since we measure, we are in the scientific world, so far, we concluded we have a combination of nine elements. Very quick. The first five is the absence of all harmful radiations. Right now, we are standing here, below the sky, but a lot of cosmic radiations coming our way. That is, if we agree that our planet is a sphere. It's a planet, not the flat Earth. If it is a sphere, a lot of radiation. Some of them, harmful. Secondly, we walk the streets, we are not even aware that natural radioactivity is coming from underground, attacking our body. So, we have enemies from above, we have enemies from below, and our poor body cells fight those enemies 24 hours a day, every day, until they capitulate. Then we have geopathogenic radiations. Underground water flows, water flow, negative energy for us. Hartmann intersections, intersections, negative energy for us. Caris, Schneiders, and so on. A lot of bad radiations coming from underground. Well, in the tunnels, no cosmic radiation. No natural radioactivity. The values are very, very minor. No geopathogenic radiation. No signal for the mobile phones. No signal for the Wi-Fi. So five major harmful radiations, and we are exposed to them right now. They are attacking our bodies. Well, they are not present in the tunnels. So when we enter the tunnels for the first time in our life, our body cells don't have enemies. Without the enemies, they can start doing their job. What is their job? To fix the problems in our bodies. To start the regeneration process. To start the detoxication process. Detoxication. Less poisons. Where the poisons go? They go either by sweating through our skin. That's why you always drink water before entering the tunnels. Blood, liver. Some people throw up. I've seen that also. These are the first five elements for the tunnels. The last four are energy phenomena that we can measure. Number six is uh, the best electromagnetic frequency, 28 kilohertz. That's our planetary frequency. Whatever is coming from our mother planet, good for us, beneficial. Number seven, ultrasound, 28 kilohertz frequency. What is the ultrasound? What we can hear is called sound. We hear from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Everything about 20 kilohertz is called ultrasound. We cannot hear, but we can measure it. Animals can hear some frequency of the ultrasound. In the tunnels, we measure 28 kilohertz frequency ultrasound. Where does ultrasound come from? Well, in the tunnels, on the pyramids, we are finding a lot of quartz crystal. Electromagnetism 
heating quartz crystal through the piezoelectrical effect we get ultrasound piezoelectrical effect transforms one form of the energy into another one electromagnetism ultrasound or our barbecues you press the barbecue and you can see electrical electricity outside what did we press we pressed quartz crystal mechanical waves electricity piezoelectrical effect element number eight very low frequency of 7.83 hertz in science it is called the original schumann resonance a planet resonates at a very low frequency nikola tesla thought it was about 8 hertz austrian von schumann measured 50 years ago 7.83 it's been the only frequency of our planet until 1990s but after that we've been developing our bad technology computers tvs microwaves laptops tablets cell phones satellites this bad energy has to go somewhere it's going to the ionosphere above us putting a pressure on our mother planet and at the con most contaminated places the cities the frequency changes sarajevo 12 hertz munich 15 new york 18 or 20. it's not a big difference 7.83 or 15. but we resonate also at 7.83 when we think and less and less people tend to think nowadays when we think we create brain waves at 7.83 as long as we have our planet at 7.3 we are in balance <laughs> cities 15 18 we have disbalance which creates stress and stress 75 percent of our diseases has its origin in stress you go back to the tunnels 7.83 you go to the bars and pyramids 7.83 so you go back to your balance and element number nine negative ions negative ions are extra electrons in a molecule so they are negatively charged and they are free in the air negative ions are very beneficial they connect with the dust in the air they become heavy they drop to the floor so they clean the atmosphere from the dust they clean it from the fumes they clean it from the smoke they clean it from the pollen pollen spring summer allergies <laughs> they clean it from the microbes and microbes are viruses bacteria, fungi more negative ions better for us in our homes apartments offices very low concentration 20 negative ions per cubic centimeter or 30 or 40 that's nothing usually about 200 positive positive not good for us so and positive ions are produced by tvs computers microwaves we go outside to the cities we go to amsterdam or stockholm it's fresher 100 to 150 negative ions per cubic centimeter Visoko, 100, 150. Sarajevo, 100. We go to the mountain. Bosnia, Mount Tigman, Mount Belashnica, Mount Jakovina, 750 to 1000. So when you go to the mountains, it's six times healthier. Of course it is. It's a common sense, right? You go to Pine Tree Forest, it's healthier than to be in the city. Six times, or seven times, or ten times. But you go to the Ravne tunnels. It is 20,000 to 60,000 negative ions per cubic centimeters. It's 50 times healthier than in the pine tree forest on the top of the mountains. This is measured and this is what we call science. So when you have those nine elements put together, Rane tunnels become the safest and the healthiest place on the planet. No wonder we can witness regeneration process. So the second purpose of pyramid energy, protect the health. You see how it's logical? Instead of building a huge 
structure like in Egypt, Great Pyramid of Egypt, six million tons, six million tons of blocks for one dead body. Now communication, health. So it serves the communities. Very logical. Number three, water. The water that we drink, according to the health authorities in our countries, is clean because there are no viruses, bacteria. Yes, no viruses, bacteria. Why? Because it's been treated by chlorine. Chlorine is a poison. We drink poison. In some countries, they add fluorides. United Kingdom, Republic of Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, United States, Canada. Until 50 years, fluorides were exclusively poison for rats. This is what people in these countries are drinking. And they're saying, well, fluoride is good for your teeth. Number three, in our water, traces of heavy metals. Why? Because when we catch the water in the mountains to bring it to our cities, we catch it with the metal pipes. Water goes through them and melts the metal. This is what we drink. And when they bring it to our kitchens, they bring it through the plastic pipes. It melts the plastic. This is what we drink. We drink energetically dead water. And if we think that the bottled water is healthier, well, think twice. <laughs> the biggest bottling companies in the world are Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola. We won't mention their names. <laughs> During the 1990s, they became the biggest producer of the bottling water in the world. And today, this is their biggest income. Not through the Coke or Schweppes or Tonic or water. In 36 states in the US, they have exclusivity to sell their water at all public places, airports, governments. There was a big scandal in the United Kingdom and France when they analyzed Coca-Cola's water. It's called <coughs> Dasani, beautiful blue, you know, packing, Dasani. What Coca-Cola was doing? They were using, of course, our city water, which is already dead. Adding aluminum, this is the worst metal, because it attacks our brain cells immediately. Less brain cells, we process information slower, or we are becoming less intelligent, mildly speaking. They were adding chromium, they were adding different metals. Why they are poisoning us, that's different topics. But this is the fact. In the tunnels, we are finding the water also. I think the guides were telling you about that. This water is not treated. But no viruses, no bacteria, no fungi. Why? Because of negative ions. Negative ions are the barrier to all the bad stuff. pH, pH 0 to 14. 7 is neutral. They are telling us 7 is the best. Below 7, acid. Acid, not good for us. For example, our city waters 6.5 to 7 in most of the countries. Coca-Cola, Schweppes, Tonic, soda drinks, 3.7. Ideal to create, you know, environment for the cancer cells. Facts. Above 7, is a very good environment for our body, above seven. But our blood is not seven. Our blood is 7.35 to 7.45. The water from the tunnels, 7.45. Ideal. It's like somebody, some higher powers, calibrated this water. And then we measure this water, as uh, our guides explained to you. And uh, the molecular structure, when you got it frozen, is hexagonal. Why is that important? Hexagon is the most powerful geometrical shape when it comes to the energy. Hexagon is element of sacred 
geometry. Hexagon consists of six equilateral triangles. And the equilateral triangle is a symbol for the pyramid. 2D triangle, 3D pyramid. So the water that we drink is energetically alive. It vibrates high. What does that mean, vibrates high? How do you prove that? Well, we are what we drink. If you drink dead water, vibrationally very low, or if you drink energetically live water, it's going to affect you. We are what we eat. Here you can eat meat, or vegetarian, or vegan food in our restaurants. It's our choice. We make the choices in our life. You know, meat can be very, very you know, uh, good for our tastes. However, <laughs> however, next time you eat the meat, you know, if you have five animals in a row, they kill the first one so they can serve it on our tables. They kill the second one, the third one. The fifth one already know what's going to happen. Can you imagine that terrifying feeling, that panic in their body and what kind of hormones they release. This is what we eat to regenerate our lives. We are what we think. If we are sitting in front of the magic box within four concrete walls, listening to what our media is telling us, of course, the fear will rule us. Or if you come here to our district, Ravne, Bosnian pyramids, tunnels and park and the nature, you will think differently. Our vibration will be differently. When we are angry, when we are violent, we vibrate very low. <clears throat> or when we have love for the whole planet, we vibrate high. When you are young, like this lady here, when she is in love, when she is in love, she is in heaven. Meaning, she vibrates very high. So, our third conclusion about the purpose of the pyramid energy, it improves the molecular structure and vibration of the most important liquid in our life, water. And we are, they say, 75% water. We are 99% of water. Because when you take the material stuff, like the brain, or bones, when you squeeze it, again, you got the water. Number four, we improve food with the pyramid energy. Number five, we improve our immunity. Very important. In the last three years, they are telling us the key word is the vaccine. We are saying, the key word is immunity. Vaccine or no vaccine, you're going to get virus. We witness that. But once you got it, it only matters your immunity level. If it is high, you can resist anything. The next, the auric field or bioenergy field we have around our bodies. We have seven of them. The first one, the most condensed is auric field. Here we have the machine to measure the auric field before and after the tunnels. I don't know if some of you did that or not. No, that's okay. That's a Russian technology, Professor Korotkov, who's been here several times. Well, we measure auric field before the tunnels. In many cases, it has been, this field has been discontinued. Why? Because of the stress we have in our daily life. After the visit, it's filled with a good energy. It improves our chakras balance. According to the Eastern tradition, Eastern meaning India, Tibet, China, we are also energy body. And there are seven major chakras, seven intersections where the energy flows. They should be ideally balanced and open. When they are open, energy flows and they affect our blood circulation in very beneficial way. When our blood 
circulates to every part of our body, we are healthy. And the opposite. Well, we have seen chakras in some people left and right and very small. Why? Fear, uncertainty, stuff like that. After visiting the tunnels, chakras getting back to balance, they are opening up. Very important. The next one, it develops spiritual abilities. Now, what is this? I mentioned that we view the world around us through our five physical senses. We can hear, unless we are married 30 years, then we don't hear our wives. <laughs> we can see, or we hear, or wives, the same thing. The wives, they hear selectively. They hear what they want to hear. <laughs> So, we can see, taste, you know, touch, five, five senses, smell, but like I said, what we hear 20 hertz, 20 kilohertz, we don't hear 50 kilohertz, we don't hear megahertz, we don't hear gigahertz, we don't hear below 10 hertz, 5 hertz, we don't, we don't hear infrasound, we don't hear ultrasound, the whole new world, which is 99% bigger than what we hear. What we see is just those seven colors. Today they became known as LGBT, IQ, plus, blah, blah, blah. But we really can see only seven colors. It's very, very small range. If we could see a little bit more, like cats, for example, we could see spirits, we could see energy entities, we could see extraterrestrials. Who knows what we could see? If we could see just a little bit more, and imagine if you could see much, much more. Well, besides five physical senses, we have 30 spiritual senses. Spiritual. The word spiritual. Well, according to some, spiritual, it means religious life. Religion. Let's forget that. Faith. Let's forget that. These are different categories. For me, Spirit, spiritual, concerns the world beyond the physical reality. We can sense our physical reality, but behind it, it's a huge, let's call it, spiritual reality. Which we can sense, at least partially, with our 30 spiritual senses. What are our spiritual senses? The first one, which is very simple is to feel the energy. How can we feel the energy? Maybe some of you know, you know, people who work with the bioenergy, they bring you in their, you know, offices, they tell you, okay, lay on the couch, and they do something above your body with their hands. They don't touch you, but they do something. What they do, they manipulate with our bioenergy field. Can we feel that energy? We can, all of us, or at least majority of us, and we can experience it right now. Open our hands, let's get them close to each other. You can do like this, you can do like this, and after a few seconds, you will see little resistance. You can feel a little bit warm. Can you feel that resistance? Can you feel it? woman in love. Can you? Yes? You can feel some? What we are feeling? Can you feel something? You can feel? Okay, so what we feel, it's our energy field. And then we can start playing with our energy field, and then we can start playing with other person's energy field. Then she closes her eyes, and then she can feel a little bit warm. Energy coming from our hands. Okay, you can open So this is the first spiritual sense. Well, according to me, I'm making things up. So, that's the first one. Another one is to see the energy. How can we see the energy? Again, rather simple. For example, the way I do it, I put two fingers next to each other. Like this. Uh, and then by focusing between those, those two fingers, we can start seeing a little energy field above our fingers, little energy field, couple of millimeters. 
if you can see it, yeah, then can you can see it. it. Yeah. Very good. You can be my assistant from now on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we can see the energy. This is very rudimentary. Our auric field is much bigger than a couple of millimeters. It goes up to one meter. With the practice, we can see more and more. But this is what is more condensed next to our body. And then we can start seeing the colors of our energy field. Right now it looks like white, whitish color. So blue, uh, yellow, I see some yellow. Very good. When you see some colors, the colors have meaning. Ex excellent. Blue and yellow and red no more, no and more. green. I'm sorry. Excellent. If it is red, red is from the temperament to the violence. Blue, green, health, love. White, it's with the... So, different colors. And then we can start seeing our chakras. If they are here or left and right. With the practice. And then, um, then we can start communicate, communicating with our thoughts. Telepathy is a spiritual sense. We all have potential to develop the telepathy. Nobody teaches us. Long time ago, that was a schooling. People were teaching their kids how to communicate with their thoughts. Today, telepathy sometimes, seldomly appears. For example, couple, they've yeah. been in marriage for yes. some time. <laughs> Too long. <laughs> when the man, when the man <laughs> look at the woman in the evening, she immediately knows what he wants. Yes. All right. I often tell the story when I moved to Houston, Texas, three years back. Then I would be calling my parents in Sarajevo. You know that old classical phones, <laughs> dialing, and uh, so before I would call them, then I would think, hey, I have to call my parents. But the moment you said that, yes. or even when you think that, what you did, you created a brain wave. And those brain waves, they go out to the universe. What happened next? I dialed the number, my father answered the phone, and said, oh, your mother told me two minutes ago that you are going to call. What happened when those brain waves went out? Who is the best antenna? Our mothers so she received the message so telepathy is something that we can develop but we don't imagine that we can communicate by telepathy you go come stop mm, bye <laughs> no speaking which is very important our civilization use talking but when you talk you can tell the truth or you can hide the truth. Yeah. Or you can tell what some other people want to hear. You want to please them. You don't tell, and so on and so forth. Telepathy, you know, no interference. Or when I'm looking at your auric field, I see all blue or all green. I know you are a good person. I see red. Mm, something's happening here. People then could not hide if we develop our spiritual senses then we would have to be pure and sincere if we developed them. Of course, the more sophisticated spiritual sense is moving through space and time or teleportation. Of course, we have ability for the astral projection when we move our soul to our body and then if we do it in a control way, it's called astral projection. But imagine that we can move the whole body through what people call portals. For that, you need two elements. The first one is energy field strong enough, and the second one is technique. You have to know technique. Where we can find those energy fields? Imagine the pyramid at the original times, when our mother planet was much stronger and healthier, before the end of last ice pyramid was amplifying very strong energies, creating even stronger energies, and having those energy fields very, very strong. When was the strongest? 
when our planet was receiving the most of the sun rays. Summer solstice, June 21st. Why do you think the ancients were celebrating summer solstice? Because of that. Also, equinox, fall and winter. At that time, the pyramids built according to certain criteria and megalithic sites like Stonehenge, Avery Hill, Alesternar, Rujman Hiri, Israel, they were creating energy fields strong enough to create those portals. Why we talk about portals in the last couple of decades again? <coughs> because that knowledge, that oral tradition is coming back to us. The pyramids, the energy amplifiers used for many purposes, working on many different levels. Not to mention that the top of the Bosnian plane of the sun was astronomical observatory also. So now we are coming to the revolutionary conclusion. The pyramids around the world were not built as tombs for the pharaohs, for the kings, as the places to, you know, hold to the, you know, uh, last location of the rulers. They were built to serve the living communities with intention to last almost forever. What we do here, many people don't like. Some of them, like English elites, or some German, or some American, they know why they don't like us. Some of them, like local scientists, or scientists, jealousy, lack of knowledge, and so on. But despite everything, thanks to the people who vibrate with the pyramid energy. And that's the reason why you're all here today. Some of you trying to remember why you are coming back. Because indeed, you are coming back. More times you come, more stronger connection with this complex you have. And more times you are dealing with this complex in the, ta in the past. Not once, more than once. Think about it next time you go to meditate in the tunnels or on the pyramids. So, this project has become the most exciting project in the world of archaeology. But much more than that, we are also in the world of science, energy aspect, spiritual aspect, healing aspect with our beautiful park, cultural aspect, sport aspect, musical concert, dance, joy. We are talking about different concepts of living. Not what they try to enforce on us. Transhumanism, artificial intelligence, we becoming the slaves to elites. Not that. Different world, different concept of living in a harmony with the nature and in a harmony amongst all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you.